Every foundation starts with stamped structural engineering drawings. That is our engineer's stamp in the top right corner. This is pretty basic, but uh, it shows us a lot of what we need to execute our foundation in the field. It shows the slab depth and the slab width. This might not be 100% accurate, but it's a great reference point to start off with. This sectional is really what we're concerned about. It shows how deep down we need to bring our foundation. It shows us how wide the footing needs to be. It shows us where our J bolts go, four feet on center, embedded in the concrete minimum of seven inches, and they're gonna be catching a two by six pressure treated sill plate on top. We have two inches of rigid insulation at R15 value. We are gonna do four inches of insulation. We never get in trouble for adding more insulation, even though we should have these structural drawings done. Um, these are really just to show the minimum insulation to meet new energy codes. We over insulate pretty much everything that we do. This specs our vapor barrier going above the insulation. We are gonna do this under the um, insulation to keep protecting a little bit more. Concrete absorbs moisture a ton, so we wanna make sure everything is protected and there's no transmission to the subfloor sheathing, which is two layers of three quarter inch Vantech floor sheathing. One of the things we're really concerned about is the rebar. You can see there's a cross section there. So these dots right here, essentially mean that our engineer wants us to have rebar running around the entire perimeter like this. There are two of those, so one on the outside, one on the inside, a couple inches from the edge. It's a scale drawing so we can see exactly what they're looking for. They also want us to have perpendicular rebar at every 24 inches on center. They're also calling out the size of the rebar. Number four bar means half inch rebar. This is essentially what we are looking to do, what our assembly is. That's our dirt, that's our concrete, that's our insulation. So we're gonna be using that as reference when we pour. I'm standing on our brand new foundation. It includes a footer that goes all the way around the perimeter and a nice thick slab on top of it. We did what's called a monolithic pour, which means the footers and the slab were poured at the same time. We had the engineering drawings to help us. They indicated where the rebar needed to be, how deep the footers needed to be, how wide they needed to be, how thick the slab needed to be, how much gravel needed to be under the slab, where the insulation is gonna go, which is right here. On top of the insulation is gonna be the sheathing. You know what they didn't tell us? Which was how to deal with the gap created by the insulation and the sheathing. So, like Terry was saying, this is an unorthodox pour. Typically you have a footer, then you have a stem wall, then you fill in with gravel, and then you pour a slab. That's a three part section. We are super behind budget because as you guys know, we had a ton of safety violations to clear. So we came up with this design with our engineer. It's a monolithic pour. Um, essentially we were able to pour all the concrete in one day. And that means we only had to have one special inspection and we only had the city come by to inspect one time. What that means is there is no insulation under the slab, which we, totally hate. Uh, concrete slabs should all be insulated and they should have a really robust vapor barrier. So our design right now, we're kind of creating a tray for everything to sit in. We have our concrete, our vapor barrier is going to come up over the sides and go under the sill plate. Um, on top of the concrete stem walls, we have sill seal to keep uh, any capillary action from causing moisture wick from the concrete up into the framing. There's gonna be two layers of insulation here that are each two inches thick, and per the engineer's requirements, we're gonna have two layers of three quarter inch subfloor. So that brings us to five and a half inches. What we did when we were pouring, we marked off five and a half inches down here, and we kind of carried that line all the way across so we'd have a nice level slab for our kitchen. What we're gonna do then is put two inches of insulation, two inches of insulation, then a total of an inch and a half of wood. There'll be a vapor barrier under there, and everything will be glued and screwed into place with concrete anchors. Uh, Tapcon is what we're gonna use on this one. So we're gonna have a really solid, really well insulated floor for our kitchen. So the way our walls are being constructed, the load is gonna be on here and on here. The only reason there's a footer all the way around is it gives stability to the whole assembly itself. So it doesn't shift, doesn't move, has that cup action, so it keeps everything from wanting to shift and it's uh, actually an incredibly strong way to build a foundation, especially such a small one. As we know, the loads are being carried by the party walls. Uh, this back wall is really just infill. The wall assembly is gonna be holding nothing except the weight of itself. 
uh, which is still substantial. There's still a footer under there, but we have a little more flexibility with what we do with this wall. We have our 72 inch patio door here. We have our cabinets on either side. So what we wanted to make sure happened was that the patio door and the floor didn't create an awkward step that was a tripping hazard. So after the um, CMU walls were set to create the pan for the insulation, we poured this curb where the door is gonna sit. We will either use a rigid plastic um, sill pan in here, or we will do like a fluid applied zip system or possibly a Benjamin Obdike uh, product. But we're gonna create a continuous sill pan here. And what we did when we set the forms, this is five and a half inches to compensate for the thickness of our insulation and our sheathing. In the front, it's five and a quarter inches. So that means water will fall out away from the house and not into it. Uh, it's called active slope and it's one of the first and most critical and most important ways of water management. So this is a J-bolt. It's important because this is what's gonna be holding the framing to the foundation. It's embedded about seven inches into the foundation as prescribed by the structural engineer. And the reason that it's do doing that is so that it has a mechanical connection to the foundation, meaning the walls are tied to it. We leave the nut and the washer here so that when the framers are installing the walls and the sill plates, they fasten it right away. Hey, what are those stupid orange caps? Well, you might be wondering what these orange caps are. They're so Sasha doesn't step on it and hurt his fragile foot. Terry, I wore sandals at the job site one time. Seriously, f off. Between materials and labor, this foundation cost roughly $6,500. Before we pour our slab, there's a bunch of inspections that we need to do. It's a lot of paperwork, it is a lot of, not so much shifting of liability, but it is making sure that all of our T's are dotted and our I's are crossed. We need to have an initial inspection, which is the city coming out, telling us we're okay to start digging. Uh, that's great, that's easy. Almost everyone passes and left if there's any crazy safety violations that could possibly hurt someone. So, our masons start digging. They dig everything uh, to the depth that the structural engineer tells us we need to do. Uh, in our area, that's usually 36 inches. Um, there's a frost line that we need our foundation to be below so that when the ground starts freezing, there's no shifts, it doesn't cause our building to start moving. Uh, the way this is done, it's a very strong type of foundation. It gets a lot of stability from the shape of it. Once our foundation is dug out to the right depth, we set our rebar. Once the rebar is set, we have a special inspector come back. Uh, he's part of the engineering company. It's part of our engineering package. We're usually charged a one-time fee. In this case, it was $350. So the engineer comes by, tells us that our rebar looks good. We're able to call the city. City sends an inspector, makes sure that we've had the special inspector come by, tells us everything's good. A lot of paperwork so far, right? I just want to be building stuff such as life. We pour our footing. In this case, our footing is our foundation, so this is where things got a little bit weird. Um, you need a footing inspection, and you also need to look what's called an under slab inspection. Under slab inspection looks for insulation, it looks for vapor barrier, it looks for any plumbing or electric that might be done under the slab. This right here was a little bit of forethought. There is no rain leader called out in our architectural drawings. Maybe that's okay, maybe it's not. There's an existing rain leader in that alley, and there's also an existing rain or yard drain right over there. We're gonna add a combo, a cesspool combo. It's a rain leader cesspool combo. So the rainwater comes down here, and there's also a little yard drain there. We don't have a plumbing permit yet because we haven't awarded the contract. We're still negotiating with two different plumbers. So we were hoping that we could sneak by without having an under slab inspection since that's kind of all covered at the same time and our inspector told us we're good to pour they saw this pvc pipe running and they gave us a ding i called the inspector back explained to him hey we this is for forethought that's a conduit for future use we don't have a plumbing permit yet and we haven't connected to anything this isn't connected to the drain yet this is in case someone tells us that we need a yard drain or we notice that one is not sufficient so a lot of times when you're transparent and you explain to them that you're not trying to you know, abuse the system, you have no intention of not getting a plumbing permit, they really work with you. The same thing goes with our make safe permit. We told them that we're rebuilding this house, we're extending back. Here's our invoices from our structural engineer. Here's a letter from our structural engineer. We wanna get this house done as quickly as possible. Here's our plan, here's how we're gonna do it. Here's why we did what we did. Here's orange things so no one hurts themselves. We take that stuff very seriously usually it works out pretty well. 
That being said, we poured our foundation. After it cured, we set these CMU blocks. We grouted them solid, which means we filled them with concrete. We had a massive heat wave, so our framers are gonna start on Monday when the temperature cools off a little bit, and we're gonna have a ton of content about framing a house, and it's the most transformative stage is when a house goes from a dilapidated piece of, goes from a box full of potential to a bigger box full of more potential.